Hey guys, today let's talk about character concept art and character portfolios. This is probably the most popular and hence the most competitive of the concept art discipline. So with all the concept artists I talk to and aspiring professionals, it seems like this is a pretty clear majority. Most say that character art is what they want to do. And they're right, character art is completely awesome. I've been obsessed with it since I was a kid. It's what I wanted to do most when I was first diving into this industry. So today, with the benefit of some years of doing this professionally, I wanted to share some observations and hindsight about what works in a character portfolio piece, what helps you stand out. And these are things that I'm convinced help me land some of my favorite character art clients. So, best practices, what to prioritize, subliminal tricks you can play, just a bunch of things that I wish I had known a decade ago. First of all, let's name the most important part of a character painting, which is the human part of the character the figure painting, the actual people painting skills at the core of any character design. And I'm sure you're all aware of the concept art saying that you can't make a good character if you can't paint a good person. But let me frame this in a few ways that you might not have really considered. This is kind of what made this click for me, and I think this will actually be useful in your workflow. So just to put some vague numbers on this, I would guess that 80% of the ultimate success of a character concept piece is decided before the first bit of painting or even design happens at all. It's the pose. It's the base mannequin figure at the core of all of the storytelling and costume design and gear design that we'll add later. It's that base pose sketch at the very beginning. So. Are those proportions right? Is the posture communicating what we want it to? Believe it or not, I think about half of my total project time is spent developing and fine tuning this line art sketch pose at the very beginning of the project, half. In fact, for this reason, I keep a massive library of these poses that I've developed over the years I never throw one away because once I've created it, I always like to design on top of one of these, kind of like a mannequin. So before I add any decisions on clothing shapes or hairstyle or storytelling, I want that pose to be airtight. And this is the hardest part, right? All of these people drawing steps are hard and there's very little margin for error. So to think of that another way, most of the time when I'm critiquing a piece of character art or I'm betting when an art director reviews a character art portfolio and decides to pass, it's the people part of the painting that ends up kind of sinking it, disqualifying it. It's something like the head is too big, the hands look weird, the hair is unrealistic, those little people details. And when those things jump out as a problem, it sadly almost doesn't matter how cool the clothing or the space armor or whatever, just the whole story stuff kind of doesn't even matter. Those people painting skills just have to be on point or the whole cool design will just be dismissed. But let's look at like the happier flip side to this. If an artist has extraordinarily awesome people painting skills, it buys you a lot of credibility. A well-painted human can just blind your audience so that it can work for you or against you, but it's really decisive in the ultimate success of a character painting. Let's break this into approximate percentages, which I think says a lot about what I try to prioritize. I'd say I spend two thirds of the entire project painting time on the human. So the pose, the face, and any skin that's showing. It's that important, two thirds. 
Now let's break that down further. I would say that fully half of the entire character painting time is spent on the face alone. Faces are what we are hardwired to engage with. It's the first thing your audience will look at. It's where that critical two second first impression will be formed. So make it a killer. Make that face relatable and engaging. Make your viewer pause for a second and want to learn more about this character and their world. All of those things hinge on getting this critical detail right. It's crazy. It ends up occupying less than 10% of the total area of the character, but it's where the vast majority of the attention and the time end up being invested. Another thing that ends up being a huge difference maker is creating characters that feel grounded. We want these people that we invent to feel real. We want them to resonate, to really engage our viewer. And we want the viewer to see themselves a bit, or at least kind of recognize something familiar and deeply human in these characters that we create. And we can do that in so many ways with visual storytelling. You can reference something in the real world to make it feel grounded. You can use something from your own memory and experience, your visual library. Just make something that your viewer can accept. It sets the stage. Once the viewer feels an authentic, real person, it's like they have a real personality. They exist in a real world. And then we're free. We are empowered to show them all of these amazing story details on top of that foundation. So this can be fun. You can weave in really human details. Have that old doctor kind of ironically smoking a cigarette, even though he knows it's terrible for him. Have that hard-as-nails police chief have scars on his lip from you know fighting when he was a rookie. Have that steampunk orphan kid look kind of skinny and dirty, but still scrappy and resolute. That kind of stuff. It's fun. So for this character, it's all about her pose. Check out how she is kind of fussing with her hands just a little bit. She's cleaning dirt off of them or just sort of fidgeting. It's this really human, relatable thing that we all do without thinking about it. And it makes her seem kind of subconsciously hardworking. It just feels like this painting is a snapshot of this very candid, very human moment. And in fact, when you think about it, standing straight up with your hands at your side, like you see so much character art has that pose, it's kind of a weird thing to do. It looks posed like a mugshot. I don't think I ever really do this in real life unless I'm like getting a driver's license photo taken. And when we have character art that feels wooden and lifeless in that way, it can just ring false. So I've gotten very fond of making character portfolio pieces that have some very humanizing element, starting with the pose. And this was a difference maker for me. Years back, I noticed that all of my favorite character artists seem to be doing this really well. They seem to all have that in common. So if you design a character pose, make sure it's something that you would do in real life. So whether it's casual like this or something aggressive like a warrior, make that pose feel really authentic and human, really grounded in reality. One of the main things that art directors look for when they are sifting through portfolios and applications is signs of maturity, signs of experience. We need to create the impression of an artist who knows what they're doing, who's been working in the industry for a while, who can just really solve 
problems. And this is a puzzle, right? This can be a really tough thing for artists trying to break in. It's like, if no one hires me, how will I get that experience that everyone requires in order to hire me? And so much of overcoming that is just good old fake it till you make it, giving the impression of experience, even if you have relatively little. And a great way to do that is to choose designs that are slightly less obvious. Choose the road less traveled. Here's what I mean. There are so many space soldiers and Viking princesses out there that it's really hard to stand out and really grab your viewers' attention with those very well-worn paths. And look, you may definitely be called upon to create those characters as concept artists. Those archetypes definitely have a place. But when creating portfolio characters, I often try to see these little forks in the road, little supporting actors that we can depict in these grand worlds that we imagine. NPCs, non-player characters, are your best friend in a character art portfolio. So instead of that space soldier himself, show me what his mechanic looks like. Instead of that Viking warrior, let's see the blacksmith. Or maybe a Viking who has some spin. Maybe he was born with some physical limitation that he had to overcome. Little deviations like that, little extra bits of story, can lead to designs that are so much more interesting and nuanced, and those end up really projecting experience and maturity in your portfolio. So pick the slightly less obvious choice. Pivot away just a little bit from those character archetypes and just ask yourself, what other stories can be told in that world? support characters are awesome for this. So for this character, she's a mechanic. I'm giving a few nods to not too distant future sci-fi, but it's subtle. She has a tool belt. She's rubbing engine grease off her hands. Maybe she's the character we go talk to between missions out exploring in our mech. Or if she's our main character, it's, it's some kind of a more nuanced story. The internet probably has enough Master Chief and Conan the Barbarian imitation. So stretch your imagination a bit. Just make something 10% different from what your audience has seen many times before. Let's talk about character culture. I love this. This really relates to that need to make our characters feel authentically human, but this kind of goes a step beyond that. This is the story, the personality, the attitude, the motivations, the trauma, the flaws, you know, that, that style, all of these human nuances that kind of add up to a character. And this can come from so many different places. It can be culture that you identify with coming from a specific group, some existing real world culture. It can be a style or an attitude. You know, we can give our characters a little bit of edge, a tattoo, a piercing. We can, like here, we can tie their jacket around their waist to kind of make them seem casual or irreverent. Uh, little pieces of flair. Any detail that can give you a peek into what this character's story and personality are all about. And five minutes of research can make a huge difference here. Just search the internet for an image of a person who has that energy you are looking for. And then you just kind of take it apart. You just ask yourself, what about that person gives you that perfect impression you're looking for? Is it their clothing? Is it their pose, their facial expression? Is it some style detail? Try to train yourself to deconstruct these references and then use that. Use those details to put that culture and attitude into your own character. And look, the little bumps and imperfections 
are what make us interesting as people, and the same is true of your character art. Show your viewer that your character has layers, has a story to tell. Finally, let's talk about creating value. This is the cornerstone of all of my formal classes, how to create art that is valuable to your project, to your employers. This is what makes an artist hireable. How much value can they bring to a project? So as a concept artist, we can demonstrate this in so many ways in our portfolio. We can do things to make our idea really clear to a downstream 3D artist. Things like adding turns, right? Different views of your character. You can add little detail illustrations in the margins, like what does her tattoo look like in detail? What does her t-shirt say underneath her overalls? What does her jacket look like when it's being worn and not just tied around her waist? All of these things show an art director that you know how to really describe these things. You can provide options and iterations. You can do much more than just paint a single pretty picture. You can actually solve problems. You can advance the project. And that is the job we're ultimately doing. That's what we get hired for. So for this character, I'm creating some quick hairstyle variations just to add a little more value, show some different looks to this as a portfolio piece. And it just, look, it takes a few extra minutes but it really pays off. It adds so much value to the final piece. Awesome, let's call this one finished, and I hope you like it. I'm going for something that feels really authentically human and relatable, a character with a story to tell and a world we'd like to visit. Thanks for checking this out, guys. If you would like a detailed tutorial on this project, including the brushes that I used and a pack of the pose templates like the one I used here, be sure to check out this month's project kit at digitalpaintingstudio.com. I'll be back soon with a new video. In the meantime, good luck with your artwork. Paint something cool today.